Hi everyone, welcome back to another HowTex How To video. Today we're going to do an unboxing of the Fossil Q Wanderer. So let's take a look at the box. So this is a Android Wear based smartwatch uh, made by Fossil, which you probably know as a watch manufacturer more than a technology company. Uh, let's take a look at the back. Fossil Android Wear uses Bluetooth and the cool thing about this, unlike both the Apple Watch and the Samsung Gear watches. This one works with both Android and Apple iOS. So let's take a look inside the box. Okay, and it's pretty simple actually. Um, basically, it's just right here we have the watch on this little pedestal. Um, let's pull this out, check the box first. Um, documentation. Let's see, documentation first, we have the uh, quick start guide. We have an extremely thick manual, um, and that's, I guess, mostly just warranty information. Perhaps it's, oh yeah, it's all just warranty information. So, uh, in, who knows, 20 different languages. So yeah, you can practice your Japanese or your Italiano um, reading that one. So, I don't think anyone's ever going to read that. Uh, the cool thing is, there's one more piece down here hidden way in the bottom. It's actually stuck in a piece of foam, I guess. And that is our charger. So it has a basically almost the same as an Apple Watch. Uh, it's a magnetic, let's get this thing peeled off, a magnetic charger. Uh, that'll stick on the back of the uh, of the watch to charge uh, through capacitance, and uh, here we have a uh, USB A regular USB plug. And since there's no power brick charger, you have to plug this into a computer or some other power source. Okay, so let's take a look at the watch itself. Okay, so it's actually really nice. Um, you'd expect because it's coming from Fossil that it's more a watch than a smart watch um, and if nothing else they have you know really good fabrication on the watch itself so we can see uh, we have I guess speaker holes on the side um, we have uh, looks like a mic we have a fake crown this actually doesn't turn but it does have a button and in this case there's no uh, movable bezel so I think with the uh, Fossil Q Marshall, which is the more macho version, uh, it has a little bit more of a of a bezel on there. Uh, this one is the more refined, let's say, not necessarily feminine one. Um, really nice, genuine leather strap, um, and this is a 22 millimeter. So the cool thing about this is, with just a quick touch, you can take these guys out, swap in any other standard watch strap, unlike. Uh, Apple or say the S2 from uh, Samsung Gear. This one is totally interchangeable with the market. Not too bad, not too bad to get on and off. Okay, and of course it is a fossil branded strap. One other key thing is no heart rate monitor like you would see on say an Apple Watch. There's no uh, LED which can read your uh, heart rate. So, uh, let's take a look inside uh, by powering this guy up. Okay, so I skipped through the uh, pairing steps, but basically you need to charge up the uh, watch above 20% before you can actually pair it. And I was able to do it quite quickly with my, uh, even with my iOS device using the Android Wear app. And uh, let's take a look at the thing. So, basically it's all about swipes. There's no uh, turning on here. So uh, you can pull down to bring up notifications, sound, these are the sort of shortcuts. And you can go to settings, settings you can adjust brightness, uh, change the watch face, font size, gestures, etc. Let's take a look at some watch faces. So you have a couple of different options, some really nice ones, go for Fred. And you can also change by holding down. 
and let's check uh, so these are some nice standard Google ones let's look at some fossil ones looks pretty cool actually not quite at the point where you would mistake this for a mechanical watch but uh, it's getting there and let's see what kind of settings we can do we can change the dial color let's try a teal and we can change the index color let's make it black and the style and you can choose which uh, I guess additional things you'd be would like to be on let's put the temperature in Celsius So here we are with our teal based watch. Uh, so one thing that you notice with this is that this part is actually uh, flat. So there's no screen there basically. Uh, I believe there's some uh, proximity sensor or something in here. Um, but unfortunately what that means is that every watch looks like, I've heard different versions of, people call it a flat tire. Some people say it looks like there's uh, some water dripped into your watch and it's sitting there on the bottom and turned black. Um, either way, it's kind of a drawback to me. Uh, you can actually see here the watch. This is what it looks like when it's uh, in sort of passive mode, always on mode. You can pull up for notifications and you can also pull this side for apps. Uh, again, we have settings, we have Google Translate, we have the flashlight. Flashlight is actually not the flashlight that you think of on a mobile phone. It's actually just turning on the sh screen really brightly. So that can be kind of a dull flashlight, I guess. Um, and it just turns on and off. Go back. Let's bring up the apps again. You can see there's some delay. Um, so here's the apps again. Uh, calendar, alarms, fitness, uh, flashlight, fossil queue, which I think is your activity points, Google search, and then we're back up settings again, stopwatch, I'm not sure why some of these are showing up more than once, but they do. Um, and so weather, for example. Took a while, but basically I think that's correct. Nice standard one. Here's another beautiful face. Um, one of the issues with the apps here is if you go one more over, you can see there's two dots here. So there's actually two sets of apps here and uh, or functionality, I suppose. Today's agenda, start, stop, watch. These are more like shortcuts. Um, and one of them here is speak now, which is basically a, it's a, a voice Google search. So if you're just opening the phone up and you click over here and I happen to be talking while this is going on, it's already doing a search while I'm talking, uh, even though I didn't tell it to. So um, to me, this is actually kind of annoying. I would like to you know, not accidentally swipe into this because literally you could be like doing like this and maybe if I s switch to this position too quickly uh, and then I stop, because maybe I uh, got distracted by something and suddenly now it's doing Google voice recognition on whatever I'm saying and in this case not coming out. Uh, the other kind of pet peeve I have with this one is for the uh, for the translate. So to me this would be probably one of the cooler functions to show off. Um, here it is. So basically this is Google Translate with voice recognition. So the idea is you could be, you know, traveling the world somewhere with your uh, fossil smartwatch um, and you come up to someone who doesn't speak English, for example, and you want to speak to them in their native language. So let's say they speak, you know, there's so many languages here. You can choose Filipino, Afrikaans, Arabic, Bulgarian, Chinese, Japanese, you name it, it's all in here. Let's say I happen to be in Finland. So the question is, will this actually work? So you just touch the button and then speak into the into the watch and it should actually uh, recognize what you're saying, 
convert it to text, and then use Google Translate to convert it back. Um, but I found that the practice is not quite as ideal as it's supposed to be, so let's give it a try. How do you do? How do you do? Can you understand me? Where is the library? Where is the library? It just doesn't work. Where is the library? I've spent quite a lot of time actually trying to get this work and I found that uh, if you speak slow enough and you repeat yourself, enunciate very clearly, sometimes it works. How are you? How are you? Okay, so let's try it one last time. I'm having so much trouble with this. Do you understand me? Do you understand me? How are you? Ah, oh, it actually worked. And it actually got it correct. Ni hao ma. Let's try it the other way, uh, just to make our lives difficult. Let's try to go from Chinese to English. Ni hao ma. Ni hao ma. Ni hao ma. Oh, it actually got it. I guess my Chinese is not that bad. How are you? It actually got it correct. Okay, so you can see this is kind of a work in progress. I don't know if they're uh, improving it or if it's just the way I speak or I'm not speaking into the phone the right way. One cool feature about this is once you have the translation, if you basically tip your wrist, um, the watch actually takes what you've translated and it will show it. So this is actually the English because I spoke the Chinese. It will show it to the other person. So uh, that way, if you're speaking to someone or you're trying to communicate with someone who can't understand you, you can speak into your, into your wrist, get it to translate, and then show it to them. And so uh, that's actually kind of a cool feature. Let's see, there you go. That's basically it for the fossil, uh, fossil Q Wanderer. Um, I have to say it is a very attractive watch. Um, I wouldn't mind having it on my wrist. Um, it's a bit different than an iPhone, uh, Apple Watch, um, more traditional looking, but it's actually very attractive. Um, the main issue I have is I don't like the uh, Android Wear interface, um, and I find that uh, you know the app navigation, the features and stuff are definitely missing something. So. Uh, in this case, uh, it might be good for the person who's not really looking for a smartwatch as much as a uh, notifications enabled traditional watch. So if you have any questions, if you have any feedback, if you have any experience with this uh, watch, please let us know. Please leave a comment. Uh, if you'd like to see other how-to videos from our channel, please check them out and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks and see you next time. Today we have a comparison video with two smartwatches. On the right we have the Samsung Gear S3 Classic and on the left here we have the Fossil